Dorothy here with Done by Dorothy and we're here today I wanted to come into um, some, a few corrections um, sort of a secondary size if people wanted I know some people don't want pages as large um, I will tell you if you have not cut your pages do one thing do not put your grommets in your front and back because that's gonna add a little bit of extra work we could have saved but it's okay I'll show you on the center how to do it if they're not in there so we'll do that I am going to add a center grommet in mine um, and so I took my template that we had and just marked halfway between the two dots or between the two holes. So I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to cut our center. And again, I know we jumped right into this. This is our for the love of Australia. Okay. And then I'm going to cut my back. Whoops. That was loud. I am so sorry, guys. I'm going to line it up and cut the center out of there also. So I have a center in each of those. Then I need to cut in here too. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to only use half of my pages at a time, which is three. I know it will cut through chip the heavy chipboard so I know it'll go through this lightweight and I'm just going to line my holes up and then cut my center hole up. Again if you have if you're doing this by hand you may want to do one at a time. Um, with having the bigger one I can do more than one at a time. So again I'm just going to line my holes up hole and there you go I've added a center to my pages again I'm not going to put the grommet in until after um, so I can show you how now like my grommets I have facing out on my cover on my back I'm going to put them facing down with the inside because I want my covers to look really nice and finished and again I haven't put the grommets eyelets grommets no. Yes. It just depends on what you want to call them. I think everybody calls them different things. Okay. So, let's line my pages up here. That helps. And that's my back. Just going to make sure everything lines up here. I'm going to put my second ring in. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the front up here. And I'm, you know, that's just putting that through the holes. So. Okay. Let me pause and grab one more ring and then I'll come back and explain about a smaller size. Okay. So I got another ring to put through my center. Now, I did use the larger rings. I don't know why that feeling sort of snug in there. Okay. Um, when, you, like, these were bought at the office section of Walmart. Um, you can buy them at the Dollar Tree, too. And I may end up, I think this is actually a little bit smaller maybe my problem because one of these was from the dollar store and one of them was from Walmart so let me check something real fast or it may just be that I've nope they're the same size okay but when you buy them if you buy them at Walmart you actually get um the large ones and you get small smaller ones too so you can do a small a smaller journal so, it may just be where I cut this. It seems like it's a little snug in the center. Which is fine. Um, 
this back. Okay, now if you're wanting to make the smaller version, um, you can do the same thing. Just like we did the large one, you're going to follow the same exact directions. The only difference is, you know, that may be a little bit to the left. Okay, um, you're going to follow the same exact directions, except what you want to do is our images... This is an eight and a half, 11, eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So technically, you could go if you want, you know, your image to you just have like an eighth of an inch around on your made pages like this because we're gonna add other pages too. Um, you can do that, you know, to fit the full size pages. Then you're gonna do it um, eight and a half by five and a half. If you want to make it, you know, so you have a little bit of an area, you could do nine. That's going to give you a little wider area around the edge for like lace, things like that. You could do nine by six. Um, and then that, your cover is going to be nine and a half by six and a half. That's why I chose um, to do this. And, you know, forgive me for having to look it up again because it was, yeah, eight and a half by 11 is our covers. So our pages are actually going to be eight by ten and a half now eight and a quarter by yeah ten and a half so like when we cut this out let me cut this out really fast and so you it might be a little bit easier to and I'll straighten this up later with my just in case I cut crooked Although it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be tearing the edges around some of them. So I'll just keep this one to tear. So if I did cut it a little crooked, it's not going to hurt anything. Because every once in a while your printer jogs and it catches something crooked. So Okay. Let me get these out of the way. So, okay, like this is our image. So see, this is still going to give us a bit of area so we can decorate around the outside edges. That's why I made these. I wanted these to sort of be a little bit bigger just for something different because, you know, we all do our standard size journals with, you know, like this. Now, this is the 8.5 by 11, so if we fold it in half, like if this was going to be your page if you're doing the 8.5 by 11, see your image is just, you can have exactly that. like eighth and a half inch and you might have to actually trim it down a little bit which you can do and I tried to leave extra room so you could like cut this down to here and you know along here and here and across the bottom to make it smaller if you want to fit it on a um, page I'm trying to well I'll just use my scissors I'll just straighten it up later but like I said I'm gonna rip some of these anyway so it's not gonna matter so you know if I was just I could trim these down or use my tear roller and tear around the edges, which is what I probably should have done. So I'm going to do that anyway. So, you know, if you want to use eight and a half by 11, you feel more, you know, you want to do a standard, like pamphlet style uh, signature, you know, and putting a hardback, you can do that. And I tried to make these where they're like, all of them see where there's enough area that you can trim. So you can adapt those to a page if you want to and I mean you can make them you know however I mean you can put this one up to the top and that gives you lots of room down here or vice versa or with adding a lot of the extra around the outside edges we'll just doctor this up I tried to leave enough that if you know you wanted to you can fussy cut this I'm not gonna fussy cut because fussy cutting takes a lot to me always takes a lot of time and I'm trying not to like drag this out too long because I'd like to at least get the base of one of our cover pages done Just so we feel like we're on our way so I'm not really fussy cutting I'm just roughly cutting sort of neatly around the edges
This reminds me of like we used to do the bubble alphabet <laughs> when I was in school, you know, where you made you wrote all the letters with big huge bubbly look. That's what this always reminds me of when I do this. Okay. So, I mean, you can trim around them and that's why I left a lot of this. So, I mean, you can stamp. There's enough room that you can stamp. There's enough room that you can even journal around them if you want to. Like if you wanted to write facts about koalas or, you know, that type of thing. Or you can trim around them and, you know, use them. And that leaves you quite a bit of journaling area too. So you're not sort of stuck, you know, in one area. But still, now if you want to do a smaller one and you want them a lot smaller, um, you can print the full size pages now as five by sevens and then you're going to get, these are going to be, you know, five by seven size, but the smaller ones are going to be even smaller. So you can do it for a smaller journal if you want to do it that way. So that's why I try to keep them sort of plain because they adapt to printing sizes easier, I think, if they're not as detailed around them. So yeah, so, you know, and that gives you tons of room around it to decorate. So, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, we may do one of our pages. I think I want to leave our covers to decorate till the last. Um, cause sometimes you need to get the feel of a journal before you decorate the cover. So, and with doing it this way, you're not stuck. I always like doing my covers last. So we'll start with this page here. So let me now, and we'll go ahead and use our pink colored rock wallaby since I already trimmed them out. And again, you know, you don't have to follow exactly like me. You can use whatever animal or you want however to me when i think of australia i always think of wallabies and kangaroos and i mean i know there's a lot of other stuff over there besides that but you know predominantly in the u.s when you think of australia that's what you think of so let me i'm going to tear off a little bit of masking paper here to put under my page because I want to gesso my page I want to sort of create well you know what let's not let's um you know what let's pull this out from under here instead of gessoing let's sort of collage this page up okay I have some old book page I've got some random music page um there's a different color book page of course, we're doing green and gold. I have this really pretty green page here. I have some of this. My gold I'm going to highlight um, with gold paint. So um, let's start with this and this will get us going. And then from there, we will work with it. So... Um, And I sort of want my vintage pages to show a little bit better or, you know, show up a little bit more. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue. And again, I'm just creating, and I'm not going to ink up every single page. Um, let's see, since I have a flat side here, although we can trim around the pages because of the way, we, and I'm just literally going to, so I just, let's get some of this gorgeous green down through here because love that green and this is green that I actually oven dyed um, I will be going through some different steps about how I dye and things like that to create different colors and I try to pull my paper just slightly over the edge because we can trim that but I sort of want to get that dark in there too Let's get some of this music sheet in here. Um, well, I might as well lay that across the top since it's a flat edge. And I'll just, um, not completely, but systematically, every once in a while, just ink up an edge. I love this little brown. And this was um, part of an old work basket magazine, so...
And because I'm covering this up, I can do right like that. So now let's just grab a little bit of this brown page here. And this is the masking paper. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here since I have that flat edge there. And I covered my hole up because I have the back, so I'm going to be able to punch that hole back through there. So, and again, I'm just randomly going to systematically put stuff on here and do some of our regular tea dyed paper. Let's ink this up. Let me grab my vintage photo. And you can use, um, you could use a green ink. Um, you know, there's tons of stuff you can use. And I'm just trying to create the base of my page. And I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want that brown on brown there. Let's just go ahead and put this down here. Okay. Let me pull up my scrap box. Some more of my music page. There's the page. If you remember when we did our nature journal, I was stamping off. Practice since we look at stamps on there. There's part of a white doily. There's another piece of the green. Some more vintage book page. There's some, it's a green um, insert from like a gardening magazine. So we'll just and again I'll ink this up because I don't want too much white. There we go. And this is going to give it some nice depth because it's more of like a cardstock type insert, like, you know, from a, let me give it a nice look, let's see, okay, I'm going to sort of just ink up underneath here a little bit on that original base. Just so it looks a little darker through there. And then we'll take this and let's see, let's sort of tear this side over here a little bit. I don't want it so straight. There we go, and I'm actually going to Sort of glue this where it goes right up over there. Make sure I glue down all these little stringy edges here. And again, my art glitter glue dries clear, so I don't have to stress about that so much. Okay. Let's, um, you know what, let's use some of this. This is a book page. I actually, um, sprayed some green glitter mist over so it's really gonna add a nice bit of color to it Just trying to ink up around here and draw attention to that because it's got that shimmery glitter Glue it down. 
glue it right like that. And then when we get done doing this, technically, you could scan your page in and you would have, um, you know, a collage page you could use, you could print out later. And I may do that and show you, you know, what it looks like if you have a scanner or if you have a, just some people don't have scanners, they just have copy, copying capabilities on their printer. Then you can do that. What do you want to do? I want to put something here that's going to be a little bit different. Um, I actually have this piece of fabric that's sort of gold looking. Um, I think I'm going to grab my pinking shears sort of pink up the sides of it just so it's not so straight and I love the look of a pink fabric anyway oh yeah I like that and again I'm just randomly pulling this so I mean Make sure I cover so both sides are. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this little piece down here. I actually think I'm gonna glue it down here where it's over the hole. I'm gonna trim up around the edges, but just sort of so it's like a little tab stuck in there. I probably should have glued. paper down under there so it's covered. I might try to get that in there real fast. Although our glitter glue dries pretty fast. Maybe because it's fabric it won't. Let's see. Maybe I can pull it up. Eh, yeah, I think I can. I'll just have to re-glue it a little bit. Well, let's just go ahead and pull that up a little bit. Let's see, let's put some of this down there. Love that glitter glimmer mist. Did it look good? And I still have some of the green, so we may. And let's do some of that dark page. the vintage stuff. Sometimes I don't like inking it up because I think it takes it sort of takes away from the vintage look of it. There we go. Let's do a little random. Piece of that green. Let me make sure am I pulling camera down here where you guys can see. Hopefully I didn't run off camera where you can't see it. Oh, you can still see just the edge. Let me push that up a little bit. Oops, I have that little bitty spot right there. So I'm just going to grab this. Ink it up. There's just this teeny tiny little spot down here that's not even big enough to notice. I'll just put that right there. There we go. Okay. Let me find my hole here. There's my hole. Okay, just let me ink my little fabric up here. Put back where my hole is and fill my hole. There it is. There we go. And that's going to create a sort of little tab, which is going to look really cute because our grommet's going to be stuck in the middle of it. I sort of like that. Okay, let's. glue this down it's got that dark green on it where we stamped I think it'll look really good and sort of offset all of the other colors 
And again, this is a collage, so there is no wrong because we're still going to do, I am going to do this where it hangs off the side because I want that bottom to be cut off. Now I need something right there because I don't want that all. I want that all where it's touching like that. So we'll use like that. Do a little bit there. Let me put a little piece of white in there. Um, yeah, maybe a doily piece. That's let me cut around the edges of my doily just for draw it out a little bit. glue it up here hope everybody's having a good weekend it's hard to believe it's February already if you can hear coughing in the background I apologize my husband's laying down we're still tackling the winter blues there we go we have that little spot right there um a teeny teeny little spot. There we go. So we're getting it close. Let's put a little bit more of the brown masking paper. Put it down here in the corner. And at this point, you know, you're just literally, your goal is to cover the page. So, and that's what we're doing. Okay, let's yep, I like that. Let's ink this. You want to ink the edges of this up, just. And I may. I have a lot of white on here right now, and I'm not. I'm just dragging my sponge across there, just adding a little color to it, just sort of taking away the starkness. I'm going to leave the hole there and just sort of create that look. I think that's sort of cool looking. It adds a little bit more dimension to it. I actually think, let me run a little bead of the glue here. I actually have some of this gold where I cut it off with the pinky. I think I'm just going to lay that in there. way then I'm gonna run a bead of glue up that little gold strip and that's just the teeny tiny edge where I cut along the edge with my pinky shear and try to hold that down a little bit because as that just sort of creates that little line right there which is sort of cute I think it just sort of gives it a little bit more Let's see I think I do want to put something up here in this corner. I think that almost makes it look like the board's not finished, per se, if that makes sense. So, up here and put this in the corner, so. And we'll trim all this up when we get done. 
I love those flowers right there. It looks gorgeous. Okay, let's see. What do we want to do now? We have... this and again I'm just randomly and we're not going to do every page like this some will color will fill the whole page up this just happened to be what I was doing this time let's see and we'll do that like that yep yeah, we'll just do that right like that as to that, um, let's see, let's see, run this little dark green bit here I already got it so might as well ink it up and use it no reason throwing anything away and that just sort of links up in that corner really good okay here's my, my inker now you guys are probably like what in the world this is gonna be I promise it'll look good. I'm just gonna that like that, like that. Okay, let's find. Let's use a little bit of this along that edge. And again, I'm not gonna ink it. I'm just gonna glue it down because it already has that antiquey look. A little more of this green. And I don't really, I mean, I just sort of watch. Some things look out of place if they have that straight edge and other ones don't. So I just sort of see how it looks. You know, sort of. Okay, so this little place right here, I have a feeling it just needs some music. this little end off here and you know if I'm trying to tear a page I'll use my tear roller and I could have used my tear roller here but I sort of want the randomness of just jerking it and tearing it We've got some of that fabric on there, so we've got a little bit of mixture of everything. Sort of tilt that that way. And we've got the doilies on there, so our page is layered up. So let's grab our scissors, and all we're going to do is just very lightly, and make sure you don't, you know, cut your page. And then just trim along the trim along the outside edge. So like that. You know, if you get a little bit that you don't get off, then just go back and trim it. I'm trying to make sure I don't, you know, cut through my page. So, you know, if you fill that bite of it, you don't want to Okay, so let me get rid of all these little, too little to do anything with perky pages. 
Okay, I am going to pause. I am going to go run this through my scanner after I get the... I am going to ink up around the edges. Um, let me just do that now. I, I'm going to run this through my scanner really fast because I like to save it because you never know what project you could use the background for anymore and later on, you know. St. Patty's, Iron, anything about Ireland, because you know the green, um, a gardening. I mean, there's a lot of things you could use green for, or just you know, randomly if you wanted just a green page. You know, we do tons of botanical, that type of thing. So, you know, flowers, even butterflies with the, the grass and stuff. I mean, you could take this picture, this page, and just put like a nice little butterfly maybe down here with the grass, and the page itself would hold up. Let's see here, I'm just gonna, sorry, I got sidetracked. So, yeah, there's a lot of things you can use this page for. So, I just like sort of scanning it and having that backup copy if I want to use it for something else. Plus, I'll go through and some of these little bits along the edge. When you go to ink it is when you'll find out that they're sort of loose. So I can go back through with a little bit of glue. Make sure that they're glued down. They're just teeny tiny little pieces. Or, you know, tear them off if that's what you want to do. Okay, so I am going to go scan this um, into my computer. I will scan it and I will be back. Um, I'll also print the page out so you can see what it looks like when it's printed out um, on white paper. Um, so I will be back and let me glue this little piece down here. I just seen it was sticking up. Um, I will be back in just a second. Okay, guys, I am back. <clears throat> so I took my collaged page. And I did two separate things with it. I put it on my the bed of my printer and I just copied it. And you can see, especially around the doily and stuff, how much more detail that there is. Right? Okay. But then I also scanned it in and you can see the color differences. Like, if you can see the color differences between the brown, the green to more of a yellow tone. Um... You know, this loses a lot of its darkness. I'll try to hold those up side by side so you can see. So, I mean, you can scan and reuse it. This sort of gives it a yellow tone. This has, holds more of the green. So, now I did not do these on high quality. If I had done them high quality. And I may end up scanning um, this in at a higher DPI. Which is... Um, basically all the little pixels that it does. Okay, so we have this. So I want to pull out my wallaby. And see, he's going to get sort of lost in there. So I want to pull him out, but not so much the background. So let me grab some cheesecloth here because, you know, love me some cheesecloth. Okay, so then we'll sort of walk this way. Just so here's our cheesecloth laid out. So we put him on top of cheesecloth. See how that adds a dimension? It sort of pops him out. But he's still not out enough for me. So I am going to put this over here. Ooh rip off a piece, a piece of my masking here. And I'm actually going to ink him up. I'm saying it's a he. I don't know why because I did. I guess I have no idea. So I'm going to ink up around the edges of my wallaby here. And it may be a, a mama or a papa. Who knows? Sorry if you guys my computer talking to me in the background.
Again, I'm going to ink up around the edges, darken it up a little bit. Ink up his edges, that'll help draw him out. And I'll show you in a second, I'll move this masking paper. And you can see the difference of just inking his edges up. Because just inking, you know, adds another dimension. Sort of brings him out. But I still want a little bit more. So I'm going to glue him onto here, him, her, it, whatever it decides it is, I don't know. Whatever the artist wanted it to be, mama, papa, maybe it's a baby, maybe, I don't know, who knows. It is what it is. Okay. I'm gonna, oops, don't do that. Glue everywhere. It's okay. I'm gonna put it there anyway. So I'm gonna glue him down onto my masking paper. Now I'm not gonna completely go all the way around him, and if it goes up underneath of him when I rip too close, that's fine too. That's Now if we put him over the cheesecloth, that sort of totally pops him off the page. But where is my, I'm going to grab, oh, sorry if my head got in the way, hopefully it didn't. I'm going to grab, this is um, Distress Ink, a black set. This was our vintage photo, Distress Ink. So i pull out my black soot and go around the outside edges just to darken those edges up or you could use walnut stain um, we're actually gonna do something a little bit different too but I wanted to darken the edges up before I do what we're getting ready to do so we don't lose the edges because I mean, you can even see just darkening it up it's, it makes it a little bit different, but I'm going to pull my sheet of masking paper out real fast and put it over here. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grab a piece. Oh, let's just use this one before we pull the here. There we go. I'm going to pause you. I will be right back. I have to grab something. I'll be right back. Okay. I am back and I actually grabbed my pen and you'll see why I decided to use this paper because if any of it flows over and I use the dark because I want to be able to see where my edges are really well okay this is a gold leafing pen this is by Krylon it's 18 karat gold leafing pen um, again you can find these at various different places and I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to go all along the edges of my paper here which is why I didn't care if it like popped out everywhere it's like as I tore it if it went and if you feel like you're like how you work these, you use them just like a marker and then you just sort of push the top in and it allows the paint to come out. If you've never used a paint marker or you can push it down part way and it'll 
come out as you're drawing. I like to push it and, you know, then come back and add to it. So, yeah, I'm going along the edge. Just all of the masking paper I have. Just creating this gold layer behind him because it'll stand out a little bit more than the masking paper and again we're using the green and the gold um, because those are Australian colors and to all of my Australian pals out there give a shout out to you there's quite a few I have quite a few Australian followers and subscribers and we all know you guys have been going through horrid things and you know so grateful for the rain but hoping that you know with the dry weather and the wind picking up that things stay not as hectic for you guys over there so I wanted to do the for love of Australia just as as a salute um, to the country yay um, not only that, but, you know, you guys have been going through so much, and I just thought it was sort of nice, and, you know, February's Valentine's Day, so a lot of people are doing hearts, and, you know, don't, don't knock it, we're gonna be doing, um, we'll be doing a Valentine's type mini project, um, that will be coming out later on this week. You know, so we're happy about that, but I wanted to do something that could, you know, last through the month, and obviously Valentine's Day ends the 14th, and I didn't want to do several different ones, so we will be doing a mini one um, project for Valentine's Day along with this. Okay, we got all our gold leafing down on the outside edges, so I'm going to set this to the side just a bit and let it dry. While it's drying, I'm going to come in and I want to flip this over. I'm going to, whoopsie, I'm going to cut my holes and have them done so they'll be cut and out of the way. Although we'll have to cut them again when we do the other side. But I'm going to make sure I try to keep these open. So we can add it back in our binder because we don't want a bunch of loose pages hanging everywhere. And I knew we had this down here, so I didn't know. Let me find my there where they are. We may have you may have to snip this if you use any kind of fabric. Okay. So I'm gonna come on here with my gold pen. And I'm just sort of gonna going to go across the top of this fabric and give it more of like a, a gold tone so it's not so brown just sort of in the middle and I'm not going to take all of it away I did there because it's small but here I'll just just sort of add in little a little gold adding a little gold although with the brown it doesn't really retain its gold so we may add a couple places and again you know there is no right or wrong okay so I'm gonna come up here on the green I'm just gonna do some dots just sort of add a little bit on there and it's not even they're just sort of random. And them in the corner. This sort of gives it sort of like a, I don't know, like it's been, let me do some down here. Because, you know, it looks different.
So yeah, I just added a little bit. A little. Yep, and see it doesn't take, and with using the masking paper, it's really thin, so it doesn't take a long time to dry. So like there is what it would look like even without the cheesecloth behind it. So see that just really gives it sort of that gold tone. But I'm going to use the cheesecloth behind it because I'm a cheesecloth kind of girl. Okay, but sorry I had to pause the phone rang. If hopefully I got was able to cut it. But anyway, so I'm a cheesecloth kind of girl. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac if I can, if it doesn't go crazy here on me. Oh, that's what I'm going to say. Try this one. Okay. So I'm just going to put some across here to sort of hold it. Not in any certain area, just enough to sort of tack it down. And then I can always, I'm going to put my... wallaby down so that'll give it the support it needs to hold it so I'm gonna put that right there because I know I want to put ribbon down the side so I'm gonna put this there and I think I don't know if you can see that gold leaf along the edge it came out really pretty so definitely will be something we'll be using along the way I actually have a couple of those um you can find those oh I think you can even find them at Walmart. Um, I know you can find them at Hobby Lobby, places like that. Gold leaf pen. Um, let me. I'm using this because I use the cheesecloth. I'm not going all the way to the edges. I'm leaving that masking tape loose, um, just to give it more dimension where it sticks up around the edges. Let me put my lid back on here because it tends to go crazy on me. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my cheesecloth out this way. And again, that the gold leaf on the edges will be loose. So in a second, once I get it, and I can sort of twist it. There's some play in it because fabric tack isn't doesn't dry super fast. So then I can sort of come through where that gold leafing is and sort of. And sort of crinkle it up. That I can even separate a little bit right there, and just sort of give it so it gives it a little bit more of like dimension. So there's that. Okay. Then I have this green, which is just a different color green, and I want to use it down the side. So. And this is just like two and a half inch ribbon or so. It's just fabric. And I'm just gonna, um, I find when you're like trying to rip it, cause I know sometimes you rip it and people are like, oh, it goes all down into here. If you put it, if you take your material and cut it however wide you want, like, you know, I wanted this to be sort of thick. So this is, and I don't even get, okay, this is two inches. So I cut a four inch um, piece of fabric. The width of the fabric is what I did, but I made it four inches, right? Okay, then I just take it, lay it on your iron, fold it in half, iron it down the middle. When you iron it down the middle for whatever reason, because of that seam's already there, when you go, like when you go here and I go in between my seam, I want to rip it again and I just cut a little bit of edge to get it started for whatever reason when I go to rip it well that one did it just because I said that anyway normally it get rips right down the same just because I said that when you guys were watching probably because I should have stopped you know only rip so far see so you can see it went down the seam but then you know you've got well you can see where it went it ripped 
and then it started. So, I mean, if you stop, you know, recut it a little bit on the center and then just keep going. So, but I'll use all that so it doesn't matter to me, but okay. So, I'm going to cut this up a little bit farther up here and then I just rip it across because it sort of adds that really weird ruffly side to it and you can you know just grab threads and pull which is what you usually don't want it to do but I want it to have that very rugged raggedy look to it and then I mean you can keep those threads if you want um now I could lay this I don't know where that came from I need extra papers to do it I could lay this here and glue it down here wrap it around after the other side's done and I may do that and then cut my holes to it cut my grommets to it and I'll have a fabric edge along the edge and I may do that with a different color green I don't know but this I want to do a lace ruffle down to this side here so I could sew this on my machine um but yeah I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna if, as soon as I get my, I am going to get in a glue today. <laughs> I keep saying that, and I forget every time I'm there. So I'm just going to run to Walmart and grab some instead of, okay, so I'm just going to put a nice, nice line of glue right through there. I'm going to do it down through there, okay? So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to put about a half an inch above where my first bit of glue is. And then... What I like to do is I sort of fold it over and that glue will come through so it'll tack up. So you just sort of squeeze it and push it. And you'll see like if you push down, see like where that dark spot is? I don't know if you guys can see where that dark spot is. That's where the glue is coming through the fabric. Normally you don't want that. But when you do this, you sort of do because that lets you know it's going to hold it into spot into place. And then, I'm not going to from my object. Then you just sort of push it down. And then I come in where it's like stuck up in the thing and push it down in the center. And if you have to. You can sort of pull it up a little bit and put a little bit more glue under there if you need to. And then just sort of push it. Push, 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 push. There's my computer hollering at me again. And like I said, you know, or if, you know, you use your fabric tack down the main, you can use your art glitter glue to get up in there and just put a little dot and push it down. Now you can sew that and put it on there. This is just how I did. Then I'm going to pull my little box over here and I have um, little buttons in here. Um, I just feel like that one. It's small but I really like it. I want to use a nice big one. This is a nice big one since it's the first page. Okay. Then. I'm sorry. I know you guys are probably hearing all this noise and you're like, what in the world is she doing? Oh, there they are. When I bought my little set of pliers that I got, I got this little goofy pair like this. I have found the best use for this. I can put it on the back of a button. Make sure you cover it with your hand because you don't want to like. But anyway, it you can squeeze and then just wiggle, and it pops that button straight off the back, which works out really good when I want to hear it on my page. So let me pull my fabric tack and shake it out again. Um, you could also use E6000 for this if you wanted to. Um, so 
sorry guys I cannot do this unless I'm lucky and then sometimes I can't even do it then there we go um I find fabric tack works just as good and I'm just gonna put this I should put this on the crooked they don't like that fabric tack will let me straighten it off so I'm gonna put it here just on the bottom And again, this is going to be more of a collage art, mixed media type feel journal. Um, not like you guys are used to me doing. I know you're used to me doing. And they do, but. Okay, and then I'm just going to run Grabber Tech all the way around, all the way on it. Like that. And then, I love this big button. And I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. And um, they were like. Two big buttons on a card for I don't know, 99 cents and it was like 50% off on sale or something so I mean I paid like 50 cents for them okay here we go it's got the gold button so it's got lots of gold and green on it so let me pull my let me move this out of the way That's one thing I like about the ring binders is it makes it real easy to take it on and off. So we're going to go ahead and put our page back on. And we will do all the main pages first. Then we'll come back through and add all the cute little glittery. Oh, that was the ding dong thing to do. Okay. There we go. So... And again, you know, if you're doing the small pages, then you just do the same thing, but on a small version. And we already got fuzzy hanging out the side, which I love having my fuzzies hanging out the side. So it's already hanging out the side of my journal, which I like. And opens it up. And there's our page. Now, I am going to actually do this as a journal, but I like the big pages. I just sort of wanted to do something big because I never do anything big you know I sort of stick to the eight and a half by eleven and I sort of liked having the bigger pages I got glue on the back but we'll cover that up anyway but um this would be really cute to use whatever you wanted if you wanted botanicals crafts or whatever botanicals herbs um whatever you, know, you wanted to use if you did the front page like this and turn it over decorated your back page with like a solid piece of scrapbook and then used vellum or um, transparency film. Um, there's another word for it, and I'm running blank anyway. And did pockets on the back, and you could put ephemera on it, and you could actually have an eight and a half by eleven ephemera folder. But yeah, so just have the front to decorate, and the back and all the pages. But I like how it turned out. So we will see how it works. Um, I'm going to move stuff out of the way so you guys can see. I hope you guys have a great day. We will be, we, we will be back again tomorrow, um, you know, to work on another page. But here is our first page with our plain colored rock wallaby on it. So you guys have a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.